You know, since we started here at Antioch, we have not closed our services. Even in, for March, when COVID was announced and many churches shut down, we have not stopped having a Sunday service and a Wednesday service. Now, some of our seniors have to stay home, and people with health issues are advised to stay home. Uh, but we have been able to continue, and we're so glad that you're with us and those who are watching online that you're with us today. I just finished a series on Wednesday, and I will continue to speak on this theme right up until we get to our election on the third day, the first Tuesday of November. And I trust you will all vote, and I trust you will all vote for Donald Trump and the Republican Party. I am not shy about being political when it comes to the things of God. There's no way I'm going to be silent when I see two very different people. Some people say that both of these parties are similar, but they are as different as night and day. And I, I trust that you will see that. Now, you may have voted for Democrat when the Democrats were a nicer party. And uh, you may have not appreciated everything that our president tweets. You know, he's not God. And he's, he's a man in process. But I thank God for him, and I thank God for his boldness, and I thank the Lord for everything he is doing to embolden the church to stand for life, to bless Israel, to bless the family, and to have law and order in the United States of America. So this is like a huge gorilla in the room that we cannot ignore. We cannot just come together and sit in a circle and play nice Christian songs and sing Kumbaya. This is not that day. This is a day to lift up the sword of the Lord and to say, as for me and my nation, we will serve the Lord. And we are not backing down on this. And let it be shouted from the rooftop that our God reigns. Hallelujah. Well, this message today is called America Sees Jesus. Open your Bibles with me now to the book of John, John's Gospel, chapter 12. And I'm going to start reading in verse 20, and then I'm going to skip over some verses. This is actually about Jesus before he went to the cross, and he told his disciples that he was going to be going to the cross. And he says something about suffering and about being lifted up on the cross. But in it, he says that if he is lifted up off the earth, he will draw all men unto himself. So let's read this scripture, starting in verse 20. John chapter 12, verse 20. Now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the feast. This feast is a Jewish feast. Greeks were going to a Jewish feast. And this particular feast was the feast of Passover. That's the time when Jesus died. He is the Passover lamb. He is the unleavened bread. And he is the first fruits of those who were raised from the dead. The first three feasts of the Lord, the Jewish feasts are fulfilled exactly on the day by Jesus and his death, burial, and resurrection. But some Greeks were coming up to worship at this feast of Passover. And they came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. How many of you would like to see Jesus? Do you know all of America wants to see Jesus? Even the people who are unbelievers. In their heart of hearts, they don't even know what they want to see. But the answer is they want to see Jesus. Because Jesus is the answer. He is the hope for the United States of America. He is the husband of the church. He is the firstborn of those who are raised to a never-dying life. He is the King of kings, the Lord of lords, and it's because of him that all things come together and hold together and exist. In him we move. 
In him we have our being. We live in him. And uh, the United States of America was founded on Jesus. And whenever we've looked at Jesus, we've had victory. But when the people of God turn away from Jesus... Or this nation starts to drift away from its foundations, which are the biblical teachings of Jesus, then trouble comes to the United States. But right now, something is shaking in the land. Something is shaking in the church. And we would see Jesus. We want to see Jesus lifted high in the United States of America. The world's watching. The whole world's watching America. I talk with some of my good friends in the United Arab Emirates. And I've told them about this book I've just written called The Kingdom Coalition Manifesto. And I said, but it is, it is actually applicable to life right now in America. About our church, the church, in America being one. And following the precepts of life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness under the guidance and direction of the Holy Spirit. And this manifesto, I said, even it's for America. And you know what they told me in the United Arab Emirates? They said, whatever happens in America will happen here. They said, we're looking from across the sea to see what's going on in your land. We watch the news about America more than we watch the news about our own country. Because as the church goes in America, so the church goes in the nations of the world. And church, it's time that we spoke up, that we stood up, that we lift the name of Jesus high so that America can see Jesus. We don't need an empty religion. Are you happy? I'm so glad to be an American. You know, I was born in England, raised in Canada. My mother's Jewish. So I could literally be like a, a spy. I could be having four passports. Because I was born in England, I could have a British passport. Because I was a Canadian citizen for 40 years, I can have a Canadian passport. I am now an American passport. And because my mother is Jewish, I could make Alion go to Israel and have an Israeli passport. So then it, de it depends which nation in the world I would be traveling to. I could use a different passport. I hope the CIA doesn't come at the end of the service and take me away. <laughs> but I am so glad to be an American. This is my nation of choice. It's my nation of choice, not because there's better looking people here, not because there's smarter people here, but because this foundation was based on the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why I am proud to be an American. And this is the only nation in the world where there is such a political strength to fight for the things of Jesus. Now, some Republicans may not like this message because they might say, well, we're not just for Christians. But you need to understand, Republicans, that our God is the God of the whole world. He loves all people, regardless how mixed up they are. And he calls them to himself. But he says there is one name under heaven whereby a man can be saved, and it's the name of Jesus. And at the end of the story, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord of Lords, King of Kings. God is actually very narrow-minded. He thinks he's God. He is not confused about it. And he believes that his son is king of the whole earth and king of the universe. He says, I have set my son on Mount Zion. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing it's because they don't want jesus they don't want him as king of kings but it's your place church 
to lift his name high and to proclaim it from the rooftops and to say there is none like the Lord Jesus Christ. He died for the sins of the world. He created every man and every woman. All things were made by him. And without him, nothing was made that has been made. And he is one day coming back to this planet to put his throne on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. And from there, Jerusalem will not just be the capital city of Israel. It will be the capital city of the whole world. And it will be the capital city of the universe because that's where the throne of God and of the Lamb will be. Hallelujah. He is King of Kings, Lord of Lords, King of America. It's not negotiable. This man, Donald Trump, I don't think he knew what he was getting himself into. He thought, I can help this nation. I can do some good things. But I think that Jesus picked him up by the seat of his pants and threw him into the middle of it all. And he says, because you're the man, Donald. Because you're a fighter. And because you're courageous. And you don't back down. And you can't be intimidated. So I'm going to put you there. And I'll fix you up as we go. Some people say, how in the world can you vote for such a man with such a character where he's taking cheap shots at other people? I'm not voting for a man. I'm voting for the principles of the Lord Jesus Christ in America. And if the truth be known... If we pull back the covers, there's nobody in this room who's lily white. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. It's just some people show their failures on their sleeve, and other people hide it three doors deep in the back closet. But if you say you have no sin, you lie. That's what the Bible says. So we... The best in this room are just an inch further than your neighbor in the purposes of God. And it's only by his grace and his holiness that we are made holy. But it's not just our piety or whether or not we know how to quote scripture or whether or not we know how to worship. That is important. But what is so important is the actions of our hand and how we live and how we think and what we do for other people. And on that ground, I am so proud that Donald Trump is the President of the United States of America. But let it be known that he is not our Savior. Jesus is. Jesus is the key but he uses people like me, like you, and like many people in the Republican Party, and like Donald Trump. We just had a Republican National Convention, and it was amazing. I know some of you are tired and you don't like getting into too much. Too much study wearies the brain. And some of you just want peace in the valley. I understand. But I watched it all. Because I need to know what's going on. And I tried to watch the Democratic Convention. It was painful. It was full of negative hatred and division and polarization with nothing much good to say. But then, I tuned in to the Republican National Convention, and on the first night, I was blown away. I am a man of the Holy Spirit, and I felt something shift in the atmosphere over the United States of America on the first night of the convention. I was so proud of Tim Scott. I hope one day he becomes our president. He said such an amazing speech. And then at the end, just in his last closing words, 
he looks up, not to the people now, who he's speaking to, and he says, Heavenly Father, please continue to bless the United States of America. Yeah. That was the highlight of the first night for me. Because you know when I watch these programs, I'm wanting to see Jesus. Nikki Haley got up and talked about freedom to worship the Lord. Every single person, it seemed, although I can't say definitively, but it seemed like every single person on that first night was mentioning their faith. The church. Sanctity of life. The principles of Jesus. And some of them even talked about the Lord Jesus Christ himself. I closed my eyes. I thought I was in a church service. Do you know why Donald Trump will win on the 3rd of November of this year? It's because of Jesus. And it's because this, this party is emphasizing the priority of Jesus Christ in our nation. That's the answer for the Republican Party. I'm talking to you, Republicans. If you put Jesus first, you'll be first. I didn't read all the scripture, did I? So there were some Greeks who wanted to come and to see Jesus. They said, sir, this is verse 21. They said, we would like to see Jesus. And we go to verse 26. And it says, Jesus is speaking, whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, my servant will also will be. And my father will honor the one who serves me. Do you get it? The party that serves Jesus, God the Father will honor that party. I believe we're seeing that shift in the United States of America because finally I'm seeing a Republican Party where so many people are talking about the Judeo-Christian ethic, about the church, and about the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know another nation in the world where this is happening. We go to verse 31. And Jesus says, Now is the time for judgment on this world. Do you believe that? He says, now the prince of this world will be driven out. The reason for the great tribulation is to drive out the devil. That's why judgment comes. Only those things of the kingdom of God remain. And then verse 32, but I, Jesus says, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. This is a fact. The more church we lift up Jesus, the more people will come. That's how revival will take place in this nation and in the world and in Israel. It will take place when people make Jesus the priority, when they lift him up and the church becomes bold instead of politically correct. Hallelujah. So we read on in verse 32. When I am lifted up, I will draw all men to myself. And in verse 35, then Jesus told them, you are going to have the light just for a little while longer. I feel like he just stepped right in amongst us. And he said, America, listen carefully. You're going to have light for a little while longer. In other words, a window I would say the next four years. It may be the next eight or 12 years. But it will be a window of time. Because the other party is becoming more anti-God and more anti-Christ and more anti-Bible with every passing day. And they have a stronghold in the universities. And they have a place of power in Hollywood and in many news stations. It's pure propaganda. And it's after your children. But church, 
Listen to the words of Jesus. You're going to have the light just a little while longer. And then he says this, walk while you have the light. Before darkness overtakes you, the man who walks in the dark does not know where he is going. Put your trust in the light while you have it, so that you may become sons of the light. And remember that's generic, sons and daughters of the light. The Lord doesn't say just to believe in the light. He doesn't say just to look at the light. He says to walk in the light and become sons and daughters of the light. Let your actions and your life reflect and speak of the glory and power of the Holy Spirit, the light of life. So the atmosphere shifted. And the atmosphere in your home should shift now. Just shake the worry off. Just shake it off in the name of Jesus. And start praising him for victory. And for an amazing season that's coming before us. You know, at this convention, I looked and noticed how many speakers talked about Jesus well, there was Franklin Graham. What do you expect? Who would have Franklin Graham as a speaker at their convention? Now you might say, Donald Trump just did that to win the evangelical vote. That's why he had so many pastors and so many Christians who were speaking during the convention. I don't think so. I think he knows. He's a smart guy. And he knows how to build up the nation. And he knows it's the purposes of the Lord Jesus Christ and the foundations of the Bible that will exalt the United States of America. He knows it. But even if he only did it to get the evangelical vote, and even if he is going to come against Roe versus Wade and do his best to overturn this abortion tragedy in the land even if he did it only to get the evangelical vote I'd say I don't care what your motive are I just I'm so glad you're doing it but I believe day by day he's getting a revelation but it doesn't matter what the reason might be what does matter is that the name of Jesus Christ is being lifted up and America is seeing Jesus for the first time in a long time. <laughs> Who's behind all this? Not the mastermind Donald Trump. He's pretty good. But Jesus is behind it all. He's putting a fire under the seats of the saints. Yeah, he wants to burn your trousers get you dancing again getting you out of your box your religiosity getting you beyond just being pious helping lambs to become lions to roar the name of Jesus King of Kings and Lord of Lords over this land so there was Franklin Graham you know Alice Johnson this black lady who would pardon, brought out of prison. She's a pastor. She gave a great word. Tanya Weinstein owns a business in Montana. A coffee shop. And she said when COVID came, we had to shut down. She said, you know what I did? She started to cry during the speech. She said, then I prayed to Almighty God for his mercy and his care. And then things opened up. And because of the policies that were put in place, we are still functioning. Because of the money that came from the government, we were able just to get through. And she gave thanks to Donald Trump and praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't it amazing that testimonies that involve Jesus are spoken at a national convention? I think so. 
Yeah. And then there was Pastor Andrew Bronson, who was brought out of jail in a foreign nation. And he spoke. And then another pastor brought out of Iran by Donald Trump, Pastor Saeed Abedini. And then there was a pastor of the Navajo Indian tribe, and he spoke, Myron Lizer. And there was Kayla Muller's parents who said if Donald Trump was the president, my daughter, who was captive and abused by Muslims in jail in a foreign country, and she would not be released because she refused to recant her faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And she died. And her parents gave a speech and lifted up a picture of her. And of course, Nikki Haley and Tim Scott, Pastor Samuel Rodriguez. You know what ethnicity he is from, right? Rodriguez. Yeah, he spoke. Not to mention Pompeo is an evangelical Presbyterian. And Donald Trump now claims he has become a born-again Christian. And who did he pick for his vice president? Not a communist. Not a socialist. Not an anarchist. Not a hate baby in the womb person. He chose a born-again Christian, maybe one of the finest in all of politics, Mike Pence. You honor the Lord, and the Lord will honor you, even if you're really a diamond in the rough. We all started out like that, and some of us still are. That's right. But I want to share with you that it's, we've already moved to another level. And I want to tell you what the next four years are going to look like. I want to give you ten accomplishments that will take place under the presidency of the United States of America, under Donald Trump's presidency. I'm going to give you ten things. Now, I shared these things on Wednesday, but not enough of you were here. And only about 500 people tuned in online. So I need you to share this to get it out there. I have no doubt in every one of these 10 things I'm about to share with you that will happen in the United States of America under Donald Trump's leadership. Because I believe these are things from God. And the Lord said in the scriptures, if my people which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven, forgive them of their sins, and heal their land. So I'm expecting healing in the land because there's lots of people who have been praying. There's a lot of pastors who have shut down, but a lot of people in the grassroots of the church who are rising up. They're starting prayer meetings. They're becoming vocal. They're fighting the good fight in the name of Jesus. And this church will never be the same again. I don't just mean Antioch. I mean across the nation. The Lord says at the end of the age, that which is unholy will become more unholy. And you see it every day. Did you see what happened when those people who were at the Republican convention on the last night with after the fireworks and all of that, and they left after Donald Trump's speech, and they went out on the street, Rand Paul was one of them with his wife, and they were attacked, if not for a couple of policemen with bicycles. I was amazed at these policemen. I'm so thankful for the police that are in the United States of America. I'm surprised that he didn't pull a gun and shoot it up into the air and say, back off. I'm guarding a senator of the United States. But he didn't. He just had a bicycle. He almost got knocked down once, at least, 
And he was being pushed continuously. I don't know how a governor or a mayor allows a police officer to be pushed around by thugs on the street who have an antichrist spirit inside of them and who do not care about black lives but care about a communist agenda and anarchy in the United States of America. Now, of course, many do care for black lives. I'm one of them. And God certainly is. But not that demonic movement. That's got nothing to do with it. They don't care about another black man like Tim Scott if he doesn't follow their agenda. So when these people left the convention, came out on the streets, this senator, Rand Paul, and his wife, she said it was the most fearful time in her whole life. And they didn't think they would get to the hotel without being killed. And it wasn't just them. There were video after video after video that was shown of all the attacks of the people. And I've listened to these Atifa and Black Lives Movement people on TV. And they're saying, we're going to have violence and corruption and rioting and chaos until the police are put in their place in this nation. And you think that this spirit of darkness can be appeased? There is not a chance. The more emboldened and the more victories that a demon spirit takes hold of, the more danger, trouble, and darkness will come on the streets of America. This is a time to say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We're going to lift his name higher because he's the answer for this nation. There is a Jesus way to stop racism. And it's got nothing to do with the Black Lives Matter movement. Nothing at all. But there's a Jesus way for us to love one another and to work together and to care for one another and to respect one another. So here are these 10 things. The first one that you're going to see within these next four years under the presidency of Donald Trump is another, at least one more person who is conservative judge put on the Supreme Court of the United States. And that will give us more people who are conservative and when a ruling comes up against Roe versus Wade, for the first time in 50 years, we will have a chance to see abortion become illegal in the United States of America. And a curse be lifted off this land. So there will be at least one person. You know, Ginsburger, she's quite elderly. And if there was a Democrat who would choose the next person, I think she would step down. But she's been hanging on. She's been hanging on. I'm not saying that she'll pass away. She will one day. But somebody's going to move within the next four years. And Donald Trump has already told us he's going to put an originalist, somebody who believes in the Constitution of the United States and protection for all life and a reversal of abortion and Roe versus Wade in this nation. So within the next four years, you're going to see another judge put in place that will be conservative. The second thing is that within the next four years in America under Donald Trump, we will have the best economy that this nation has ever seen in all of its history. Now, some Christians don't think you're supposed to be rich. I don't know what Bible they're reading. 
Because the Lord says, if you walk with me and if you follow all my ways, I will prosper you. He said, test me, give your tithes, and I will give you abundance. He says, walk in my ways, and I will give an increase to all of your livestock, and your barns shall overflow with goodness. The Lord is for prosperity and not poverty. He says, you shouldn't love money, and you should be giving whatever you have, so much of it to the poor. But for this time and season, I have no doubt to say that God likes capitalism. Not communism. Because now people can prosper if they work hard. I'm not talking about those who might be greedy. It doesn't matter what system you've got, you're going to have greedy people. But we need a system that helps our minorities so that they can get ahead, so they can work hard. We need a system so that everybody in the nation can prosper and be blessed. And financial blessings done rightly is a blessing from God. And this nation gives you the opportunity to have it. The third blessing that's going to come over the next four years under Donald Trump's leadership is that we will see another Arab nation be normalized with Israel. Just this past month, the United Arab Emirates made a pact with Israel for normalization. It's interesting that for the last three years, after being in 45 nations in the world preaching, the Lord only allowed me to go for the last three years to two nations, Israel and the United Arab Emirates. And when I went there, I spoke on prayer, and I prayed over the nation with church leaders, with the head of the Church of England, with some local charismatic and Pentecostal pastors. I met in many homes for people from all around the world. And then after we left, a prayer movement began in that nation. Not because of us, but we helped a little. And now they connect with Israel. I think it is a direct response to the people of God who live in that place and their prayers. And within the next four years, we will see another Arab nation be connected with Israel. The fourth thing I want to tell you will happen in the next four years is that we will have law and order in the United States of America. And we will have a reduction of murders and crime in such cities as Chicago and Detroit and New York. In the name of Jesus, we will see it because this is Jesus. You know, the Bible says that from one man... God made every nation on the earth. And he gave them their borders. And he gave them their time so that the people might seek him. And he tells us to pray for those who have authority over us in government. So that we might lead a tranquil and peaceful life in all righteousness and godliness. And we have a president who believes in it. And I'm disgusted with mayors and governors who side and give a pass to criminals while defunding police who are an institution set up by God. The fifth thing that we will see under the next four years under President Trump is amazing, is school choice. Do you know why this is important? It's not just that everybody has the right to go to school. But you need to be sure about the people who are teaching your kids. Because if they have an anti-Christ, anti-God ideology, I don't want them anywhere near my grandkids. I want to be able to choose 
the group of people who are going to teach my kids. And this isn't just for rich people. It's for people who are minorities. They should have school choice. And they should have school choice that is just as good as people who are wealthy. I think this is a blessing to every family regardless of color or creed. And school choice will come within the next four years. Number six, we've already started to see it, but it will be fine-tuned, and that is border security. Because God makes the nations, and he gives us our borders. So it's not a spirit of God that says you don't have borders. Now don't confuse this with not caring for people outside of our borders. We ought to love people of every nation, and the poorer the people, and the more they are under a tyrannical dictator, the more the United States ought to go there and help them and feed them and bless them and drill wells and send Christians and as missionaries to build homes for them and to preach the gospel and to break away the tyranny of ungodly dictators. So we love the world and we love the people of the world. But this is our nation. And it should have secure borders. And we will see that in the next four years. Number seven, we'll see the end of the coronavirus. <laughs> Hallelujah! In fact, a year from now, it'll almost be just a memory, nothing more. I'm not going to belabor that. I want to move it on and land the plane. There's 8, 9, and 10 still to go. Let me tell you something else that's going to happen in the next four years in America. Number eight, the church is going to shift. It's going to shift from Sunday morning religious club to a people of purpose. And it will be the grassroots people People in our seats and in our pews who will rise up and say, we are not sitting idle anymore. We are doing something to help the poor, to help our neighbors, to bless those who are in need, to preach the gospel, and the pastors will catch up. Do you know why? Because people aren't going to want to go to church that has no goal and no assignment and no kingdom purpose. They're going to want to be a part of a congregation where we put our hands together and have the fellowship of the ministry and the fellowship of serving. And that is going to shift this church in America. And we're going to see more unity among the churches as a result of it. Because you won't be able to get everybody from your church to help you. So somebody from another church will help. Hallelujah. So there's two more. Because of what has happened this year. Under President Trump's next four years. And you should know by the way. I don't work for the Republican Party. And I'm not on the Trump campaign. I'm actually on the Jesus campaign. We're going to see family values strengthened in the United States of America. Some families have had to refocus because mom and dads are home and they're realizing, hey, my children are spending too much time playing shoot the other guy with a video game. And that is not healthy. And these kids are drifting into mindless oblivion. This cannot be. And parents are spending more quality time with their kids. And that's a God thing. So the family is going to be strengthened over the next four years. And lastly, something that my heart looks for. We're going to see a new dignity emerge between the races. 
by God's grace, it will start with the church. Because we'll say to each other, I love you. I love you. Regardless of the color of your skin, doesn't matter. I love you. Jesus hates racism. And if you're disciples of Jesus, you can't help but love one another. It's just your DNA. You don't put one group down because of their disposition or their poverty. Or... In fact, Jesus says it really clear. He says, don't just invite rich people to your home, people who can invite you back, but invite those people who have nothing. Invite them to your home, people who can't pay you back in that way. You know, then you find out how great those people are. They're not snobs at all. Yeah. It's going to be the church. The church of Jesus Christ in America that's going to break through and link arms together as the people of God. So those are ten things that are going to happen in these next four years. I said at the beginning of the year that 2020 will be two things. It will be the greatest year in decades for the church. And secondly, it will be a year of 2020 vision. And I really believe it with all my heart. God has orchestrated that. Not all the church is there yet. But they're coming along. And already there's the engines of the bus. The wheels go round, 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 and it's happening in the church. It's really true. And we're going to see this year close with amazing celebration. I'm looking for worship in our houses of worship to go through the roof. When people rejoice and shout for joy and sing the praises of God. So be very careful that you don't get sidelined in an issue that God is already at work fixing. Don't pitch your tent in some dark place and be distracted from the glory of the Lord that will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. This is my Father's world, and this United States belongs to Jesus. And we're going to see Jesus. The church is going to see Jesus. The politicians are going to see Jesus. The people who don't like him are going to see Jesus. The nations of the world are going to see Jesus. This is a day for celebrating. Celebrating because of prophecy. Celebrating because you know ahead of time what the Lord says. He says, comfort my people. Oh, comfort my people. And rejoice. This is Isaiah 40. He says, because I, the Lord, am coming. And you are the preparing the way before me. And I will make every crooked path straight. And every high mountain I will bring down. And every low valley I will lift up. And every rough place I will make smooth. The coming of the Lord will see that it happens. And we, the church, work for him. So we are all about smooth roads. Not crooked paths, but straight paths. Not arrogance. Nor poverty. But to see equity and blessing and the goodness of the Lord for all people in the United States of America. Get ready to vote. Get ready to preach. Get ready to dance. Get ready to laugh. Get ready to shout for joy. For the Lord Jesus is at work in your nation like no other nation in the world. And the glory of the Lord will go from here to the nations. It's called liberty. Liberty is that commodity that allows you to do everything that God has called you to do. 
and to do it with excitement and joy. And whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Please stand to your feet. America sees Jesus, but they don't know it yet. But every day, we're going to see more of him. Those of you who are watching online, please pray this prayer with us here at Antioch. Folks, would you just hold your hands out in front of you, and would you say this prayer of unity with me for your life, for the church, and for this nation? Will you say, Heavenly Father? Would you say it louder? Heavenly Father, thank you for saving me. I love Jesus. He is my Savior. Forgive me of my sins and fill me with your Holy Spirit. I lift my life to you. I lift my family to you. Let me know more of the increased power of the Holy Spirit. Protect our president and for those who stand with him that he may lead this nation in godliness and righteousness for life liberty, and the pursuit of happiness under the Holy Spirit. I lift this nation to you, Lord. Give us revival. Help every pastor and church worker to be full of the dynamo of the Holy Spirit with miracles and signs and wonders and the victory of the Lord until we are one nation under God. Hallelujah. 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 Now put your hand on your heart and those who are watching online, please stop what you're doing. Put your hand on your heart right now. and Let me bless you. You don't need to say a word now. Just receive from the Lord. Now in the name of Jesus Christ, that name which is above every name. That name which is all powerful. That name belongs to the one who knows you in every way and who loves you and who died for you. In the name of Jesus, I speak blessing over you now. I open up the deep places inside of you for healing. Healing from generations and healing from the past and healing from your present afflictions. I break the power of COVID-19 in America. I speak life, and I speak strength, and the emboldening release of the people of God. And I speak the joy of the Lord in your life, and in your marriage, and with your children, and your grandchildren, and your great-grandchildren. I open the doors for your future, the blessings of prosperity in every way. And I open the heavens over you that you will have more supernatural anointing and encounters from this day forward. I speak a blessing in your feet so that you'll dance and run and in your tongue so you'll sing and shout until we see this election and God's blessing coming to this land. I speak it over you and your family now. The favor of God, I give it to you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And God bless you.